Hello everyone and welcome to the 2022 Throat on the Mountain 10, presented by Sun King Discs along with Discraft. Terry Miller, the disc golf guy, out here at the Grand Canyon, taking in the action. We've got some FPO round one front nine coming at you. Take a quick look at hole number one, 231 feet, slightly uphill. I know, I know, I've read the comments. It's called Throw Down the Mountain. Well, in order to throw down a mountain, you usually have to climb up it. So this very gradual incline, just 231 feet will get you there. Brooksville's own Ellen Widboom on the tee. Forehand short right side. And you see the rain on the basket after a couple of gorgeous days leading into the event. We got quite a bit of rain the night before. Here's Victoria Aracho Paul. Comes out of Florida, rated 850 out of Bradenton, Florida. Here's Lisa Fakus, of course, out of Texas, Canyon Lake specifically. Lisa enters into this event with a 946 rating. And coming out of Oakland, Michigan, MVP zone, Jessica Oleski. Good looking opening drive there for Jessica. You see not much wind to speak of. Things are relatively calm. A massive storm came through the night before and a few holes have been altered 100% as a result of that storm. We'll talk about those as the round goes on. Victoria giving it a bid there. Enough power but off the mark. And nothing like the first hole jitters or nerves. <laughs> or birdies from circle two. On the hillside, great birdie to open the tournament for Ellen Widboom. Here's Lisa Fakus, a few steps closer. Enough power. A little too much at that. And Jessica with closest to the pin in the group. A little tentative on her first one. So Victoria has played in a number of divisions. She's been very successful. I think she nearly has 20 wins in various divisions. I believe she is just 17 years old. Has performed the junior divisions. She doesn't connect there, but in the junior divisions, intermediate, advanced, I believe she's going to be playing advanced primarily throughout the year. However, she wanted to jump right in and thought no better time to step up and get some experience playing against professional women than right here at Throw Down the Mountain. So she'll open with the bogey. We'll see the birdie by Ellen. A couple of pars and the bogey. And we're going to head over to hole number two. Hole two is a shortened version. In fact, the FPO division plays quite a few tee pads slightly shorter than anything you might have seen from, say, the MPO division. And I inaccurately <laughs> suggested to our uh, first-time cameraman at this event, to John, to go up that gut. I thought that they would throw straight ahead. Instead, they're throwing out to the landing zone on this short left side to play up to the pin. At 398, this isn't so much the difficulty in the distance this looks like a great tee shot 
Yeah, it's not so much the distance as it is throwing that second shot up to the basket that you see there in frame. Very hilly green. There's a little casual water on it today. Essentially throwing down to then turn around and throw up the incline. And you see, this is where the real challenge and danger of the hole are, is trying to access the pin. Victoria going on this right side. And I love the effort. She needed a little more turn. She's also going to be safe from the OB fence line that's over there. Ellen had spent some time out here volunteering on the course during some of the uh, previous weekends, doing a little bit of spotting. She said she gets a real thrill from doing such. The consummate professional out here helping out in her area. <laughs> and that water has never been there before. That is the only time I've ever seen that water there in a number of years, and that is considered casual water. A very smart play. Had she gone deeper, this is exactly where she would have likely ended up or passed this. This is coming from the other side. And heck yeah, Jessica picking up a birdie here on two. A little, literally a search party. Now, anytime you have casual water, you can bring it online without a penalty up to five meters. And that is all deemed casual. Or you can go in there and play from it. And I did see a number of competitors just go ahead and step right in there, which is always an option. And we're through to another presenting sponsor in Discraft, making things possible along with Sun King. So here we are. We're playing from this slightly shorter tee here. Hole number three, par four. You're trying to get to right here. This is, believe it or not, the perfect landing zone. And then you have a very difficult second shot that brings you along the side of the road with the fence OB on that right side. If you want to be nitpicky, you could say that's five feet too long, but that's a pretty good position overall for Ellen. Again, pretty similar position for Jessica. The distance isn't so much the problem getting to the pin from there. It's an awkward run-up. We're debating if you want to stand still or throw a forehand and you still have an OB fence on the right side when you're over there. Let's just sit down. Perfect. If I were to go out and again, barring a couple of very specific rocks, if I were to pick a spot I really like where Victoria landed. I like where you see Lisa as well. And you see all four deaths right there. Just if you're a little bit on this left side and you're throwing a back a backhanded righty shot, it just gives you somewhat more of a, a fade as it finishes right to left as opposed to throwing it perfectly straight. Jessica will have to throw a straighter shot as opposed to what Lisa will have to throw. And a very valid question asked is, what is going on with the disc underneath the basket? Those are actually minis, and they've been staked down so that whenever they bring the baskets back out and reposition them on this temporary course, that they have a very exact 
frame of reference of where to put it. So that's what you're seeing underneath the basket throughout the 18 holes. Who would have known Discraft's mini buzzes would be have so many versatile uses? Actually, I think that's out of bounds. Ellen, after two shots, just looking to pitch it up next to the pin, walk away with a par. And recognizing she gets two meters <laughs> from the barbed wire. Typically, the standard OB scenario is you get to pull it in up to one meter. And in this case, when it's the barbed wire, it's considered uh, it's two meters. And that's a really good tip, as we just heard her say, talking about possibly getting six steps. I've heard some FPO players and men with small feet, whatever. Put down a measuring stick and find out exactly how many of your feet it is to make up a meter. I feel like Katrina Allen maybe specifically once said she's exactly four of her feet. Uh, uh, Toe-to-heel in order for her to make up one meter, so... They Make sure you know. Here, but they have like some really sweet swag and jackets and stuff. But yeah, they're, they're awesome. Alan, of course, talking about a sale probably over on sunkingdis.com. I'm Garrett Gerthy. People know me as Double G. I've been making Double G Craft Jerky since I was 16 years old. I'm always a snacker, so about halfway through, I always find myself reaching for that bag of Double G Jerky. My favorite has got to be the garlic lover's dream. You just can't go wrong with garlic and beef jerky. That middle of the round, you get into that slump. I'm going to reach for that Double G Craft Jerky to help me finish strong. So most of you can't throw like Double G, but if you get his Craft Jerky, you can certainly eat like him. Go out and get some Double G Craft Jerky. You can find Double G Craft Jerky at DoubleGJerky.com. And honestly, the only real answer is hot boom sauce. I don't care what anyone talks about. You need the hot boom sauce. We're heading over hole four, 266 feet. Plays down the tunnel, then up the hill through a few more scattered trees to bring you to the upper plateau. Here's Alan, another backhand, looking very comfortable with her backhand drives. So you see what Lisa and the crew are working with here. Okay. Okay. That's a good kick. And 
again, rewind 24 or 36 or 48 hours ago from this, and the conditions were perfect out here. Didn't really have any of this mud or moisture to deal with whatsoever. Good shot by Jessica. That's pulled to the right side, and she's going to be safe from the fence. She's not out of bounds. Yeah, dissolve into your hands. <laughs> like this. Almost done. It's like little pitch. No problem. Great approach shot there by Lisa Fakus. I believe that was her Nova. <laughs> Left side, Ellen's listening for the roll away or some brush possibly, but should be all right. We've got a forehand approach here from Victoria. This event in its 10th iteration. We have seen it on the pro side. This is the ninth time only on the pro side. Rewind a couple of years ago. And we were going to go from Waco. I was going to personally go from Waco over to covering this event in 2020. And that was the weekend the world really truly effectively shut down. And this was the very first tournament Waco was shortened, and then this one was ultimately canceled on the pro side. So it's happened for 10 years. This is the ninth time our MPO and FPOs have been able to play it. And Ellen, <laughs> I believe, has been here four, maybe even five times. Yet to claim a win here. We've seen a lot of really established FPO players and MPO players come through this event throughout the last few years. Johnny McCrae's and Ken Climos have played. Austin Turner back in the day. Melton's, Heimberg's. All those on the MPO side. Sarah Holcomb, your champion from 2021. Also Paige Pierce has been here. And this lake has never been here before. <laughs> this is hole number five. The water that's down at the bottom has never been there before. This hole ultimately bends to the left. Same tee for MPO and FPO. It is a blind shot. You need to push it far enough to make it around the bend, but if you push it too far, you'll get hung up by a guardian tree. And that carried a little bit deep. She would have loved that to actually finish a little bit harder, but safe gives her a long look at the birdie. Here's Fakus. That's the one problem. If you're short and you don't make it around the bend, you're going to have a lot of work to do. If I could offer any pro tip to anyone ever playing this hole, you'd much rather go deep than come up short. Again, out in Ellen territory there, that's perfectly fine. And that hasn't quite made it around the bend. So now you're going to be throwing a blind, awkward shot. You still have the guardian on that right. There's just so many more things you have to contend with. You definitely would rather be long than short here. And Fake is very perplexed. Not a lot of options and kind of just pitching out to the middle of the fairway. You see she has 
at least a hundred and some feet to carry. All right, that puts her in line for the bogey. Also leaving herself 18, 20 feet deep for the bogey. Here's Ellen now. Clearly those tree branches are hanging in just enough to kind of block the long range putt. Either that or you really have to just rip a really low hard rifle at it and rifle it in there. And if you carry deep, you might leave yourself with a long comebacker. Fake us for bogey. So that will be Lisa's first non par of the round. Plenty of firm, just a little off the mark. I'm not for certain, but this might be the first time we're also seeing Victoria on some coverage. So I don't know. <laughs> don't know if there's any nerves. I would have to assume they come into play. You've got a couple of really solid competitors and Lisa and Jessica and Ellen. That may or may not have gotten to her, but then having a couple of guys show up also, so that you can put it on the YouTubes. I can understand if there's a little bit of nerves. The other three women all very used to being featured on camera. Big shout out to the Quick Stick, LaVon Wolf. Incredible human. And if you're looking to pick one up, reach out to me today. I can hook you up with a Quick Stick. Here's six, 687 feet. You throw off of the platform trying to find the center of the fairway and then you're going to approach somewhere into the middle here if you really get off a great drive you might be able to get there on your second shot and i like this nearly perfect exactly where she would want to be Gee, it's getting feisty. I got a hold of that. <laughs> she certainly did get a hold of it. And that is very punishing. Let's see if Lisa pushes far enough and doesn't feel like she liked it initially, but that's absolutely fine. This needs to hook up. Does comes up short of the sawgrass. She's in great position. Can't honestly tell. Right here. <laughs> Jessica trying to get her mark directly below where the disc is and then ultimately she has no other shot and just pitches out very quickly pro tip if you can get out of the way uh, we didn't i don't think we realized that she was ready to go so quickly so good on both john and dylan to not get hit So this is a blind shot playing from left to right, a little bit of a turn, and she didn't quite get over on it. It might give her a straight shot to the pin still.
That's good positioning. That'll set her up well. Oh, and even better for Wid Boom. Love it. From there, she'll have a look at the pin for Birdie. And Victoria was thinking forehand, now looks to go backhand. Just a standstill. And that's pretty well placed. And, you know, playing into this green, you certainly can be aggressive because you do have that backstop. You're throwing uphill, so you're already probably losing a little momentum. But then also, you have the backstop that's 15 feet or so behind you. So I feel like you can give it a full send if you're comfortable. Ellen, you weren't listening to me. Full send. Not three-quarter send. A little too much flick of the wrist. I'm sure somebody, well, really, literally anyone, knows more about birds than I do. I don't know if those birds are happy. I don't know if they're mating. I, I don't know what's going on, but they are very loud and very distinct out here. And if there's ever been a great trivia question for you guys or some kind of comment that I'm going to pull out of you, Tell me your favorite bird. That's that's what I need to know in the comments. Even if you have to Google one. Put it in the comments. That'll make you eligible to win. I've got Double G, Craft Jerky, huge supporter and sponsor. So I love giving it away and sharing it. The hot boom sauce that I'm not eating anyway. Uh, I love doing it. All of my videos will continue to feature those. Sometimes I'll give away discs in addition to it. Like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube things but then specifically put in the comments your favorite bird. That's what I need to know. That'll make you eligible to win. And I'm not just talking about, you know, birdies on your scorecard. That's an easy, easy play. We take a look. Hole 7, 269 feet from this slightly shorter tee you just saw. Pretty straightforward shot. There's a little bit of danger here. As you get closer to the green, it's quite sloped, and really the biggest danger is directly behind the pin. If you're more than 10 or 12 feet past the basket, you could be in a world of hurt. Uh, that'll work looking for a pitch up to the pin from there. Fake is well within birdie range with that. Well, seven played 0.15 above par during this round. It's 
It's played as the sixth easiest hole on the course. So Victoria with that, looking to save her par. Not far from where Fakus stands for birdie. And here's where you have to be really careful. This distance on this particular green. And I can't say it enough. I love that move by Ellen. She knows the danger that looms behind the basket. Not only is it really congested, but anything that gets up on edge can roll off to the right from where you're looking. 30, 40, 60 feet. Some of the nastiest rollaways I've seen in disc golf have come right here on this hole. Wow. Count it. The dunk by Jessica Oleski, a birdie here on seven. No chains required. Lisa hoping to follow it up. And she does. <laughs> this is Victoria to save her par. Not too punishing where she is. Some of those trees that can impede your stance or your lie or your even look at the basket can be the real problem. And she just pulled that one. See a little bit of frustration, understandably so. And she putts with some authority. So unfortunately, when not connecting, it looks like it can carry quite a bit. I can appreciate that although she's had a little bit of a a putting woe or frustration here or some challenge, I can appreciate that she still takes her time. I feel like sometimes people can walk up in those instances and just really frustratingly just kind of throw it back at the basket without thinking about it. And sometimes that's the right move and sometimes it's not. Every person is a little bit specific and individual as to what they want, but... We head over to hole number eight, playing from up on the shelf, really bends from left to right. You're trying to miss that one tree branch that's right there, and then you play up the side here. Beautiful green again. Yeah, you can be aggressive on your second shot, but not too much because those trees will give you a little bit of trouble here on the putting green. And this as a par three definitely will play as the single, one of the most difficult holes on the course. Just so difficult for somebody to be able to drive to this green or put themselves in putting position. And after a slip, she's pulled that way off to the right hand side. No, we could, I saw it. Shape-wise, this really sets up well for Ellen in her forehand. And the problem is she's overturned it. And there is OB on the left-hand side. However, she doesn't find it with that throw. But if that turned over and didn't come back, she likely would have found herself out of bounds.
few months ago, you also saw the Swarm Digital marketing logo here in between the screens and they're trying to do some work for us, just like Alan is here. They do website work, SEO, logos, and online reputation. If you mention the Disc Golf Guy, you'll receive a free consultation. And just keep in mind, Swarm Digital supports Disc Golf, and we really appreciate it. Believe it or not, guys, if you mention the Disc Golf Guy, sometimes that actually gets you added things. So <laughs> tell them the Disc Golf Guy sent you and check out Swarm Digital. Ellen with her really just the first sign of any adversity here on the course. And she saves that for bogey. She's going to fall back to one under. Okay, I guess I don't need to commentate if Jessica's going to give us her insight. And if you said to the division, hey, we're offering up pars all weekend long here on hole eight, you'll never get a birdie, but you'll never get a bogey. We'll just give you par. Every woman would say, sign me up. I'll take that. Few struggles. They're going to make a walk over to hole number nine. Big shout out and thanks to my Patreon subscribers and supporters. You see the T there, 306 feet, plays along the spine here. And it falls off a little bit steeper to the right. However, the left's not much better. The left has plenty of obstruction. So believe it or not, guys, you want to keep it directly in the middle of the fairway. A little bit of a bonus birdie if you find yourself all the way there looking at this basket. This plays as the third most difficult hole on the course. Um, yeah. Thanks. yeah, Alan. Leaving her about 40, maybe 45 feet at most. Uphill, good angle. Oh. Oh, my goodness. And to me, that feels like Victoria somewhat trying to either overcompensate or adjust something. We've seen a few of the last drives that were kind of grip locked and pulled to the right, and that time almost an overcompensation, which then went off to the left. Or she. What do I know? She it could have just slipped out of her hands. It's also very wet out there. So Jessica with her second. I like that. Solid approach shot there by Jessica. Lisa just trying to find a lane to pick, and she does. Great, great recovery shot there by Lisa Fakus. Whole nine showing maybe why it's not many people's favorite hole on this course. There's danger everywhere. Or frustration. Ellen now with a look at Birdie. Trying to bounce back from the lone bogey she picked up on eight. Thanks. 
All right, all right, right there for the par. This is fake as for par. I love the play. If there's any hesitation or second guessing, she just said, I'm going to pitch it underneath and, and walk away. Victoria struggles a little. We'll see if she can maybe shake off some of the nerves possibly in the back nine. And I invite you to join us. We've got, of course, back nine coverage coming to you. All this is possible thanks to our friends at Sun King, along with Discraft. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, do all those YouTube things. I think I asked for your favorite bird, because why wouldn't I ask for a weird submission like that? Put that in the comments. That makes you eligible. Guys, we'll see you for the back nine of round one at the 2022 Throw It on the Mountain presented by Sun King.